The work now underway. Lawmakers are in Austin for the Texas legislative session. We look at some of the biggest issues impacting you. It makes sense to give some relief to those that have created this great uh, um, economic climate. Your money and your state. We sit down with Governor Rick Perry as he outlines his goals for this session. And we break down the first week with our roundtable. Mike Ward from the Austin American Statesman, Shelly Koffler from KERA Radio, and Brian Sweeney from Texas Monthly. Now, in-depth coverage of the Texas Legislative Session. In session, in-depth. With that, the 83rd Texas Legislature is now in session. Good morning, I'm KXAM political reporter Josh Hinkle. Between now and May, lawmakers across Texas will set the state's course for the next two years. On the line, everything from your kids' schools and your health care to our roads and taxes. But for the first few weeks, a lot of the work is administrative, with both chambers setting up policy committees. One piece of potential drama in the early days of the session cleared up in the final minutes before lawmakers were gaveled in. Long View Republican David Simpson was elect was expected to challenge Bear County Joe Strauss in the race for Speaker of the House, but on opening morning, Simpson bowed out, allowing Strauss to start his third term as Speaker. Simpson reportedly told the Dallas Morning News that reaction to his attempt to oust Strauss was not generally positive. The opening of the legislature was also a chance for Governor Rick Perry to outline some big agenda items he has going forward: abortion, water conservation, and a fiscally conservative policy top the list. It's not a chance to spend freely, but an opportunity to rededicate ourselves to the very policies that have made Texas economically strong. The governor made a specific point to not use the rainy day funds for ongoing expenses, including education. We had the chance to sit down and talk with the governor one-on-one. -on -one. Our in-depth conversation is coming up a little later this morning. Of course, the biggest impact state leaders will have between now and May will be crafting the state's budget. This week, we learned lawmakers have $101 billion to spend in the upcoming budget. That includes $8.8 .8 billion in unspent cash. Compare that to the gloomy report back in 2011, which showed the state with only $77 billion coming in. But the good news comes with warnings. All of that money may sound like a lot, but it might not last all that long. People are buying more oil, cars, and just stuff in general these days. Take that tax revenue, and Texas has a lot more money to spend. What I think you have to understand is we're way the heck up. On Monday, About State Comptroller Susan Combs released her financial forecast for the next two years, something she says was better than expected. But Texas is growing, and groups like the Center for Public Policy Priorities say the tax system can't keep up. We're a fast-growing state, and the things that the state pays for cost more every single year. Year. That group says Texas needs $96 billion to keep up with the current budget, even with all of its cuts to schools and health care. The Comptroller says the state should now have around $101 billion available to spend. But to fund everything fully, the group says it will take $108 billion, money that might only come from dipping into savings. And there won't be any room to make any progress and in investments in the future unless we're willing to use the rainy day fund. Lawmakers must still pay what's owed to Medicaid from the last session, and some have committed to restoring what they cut from education back then, too. But financial experts with the Texas yes, Public Policy so. Foundation so, say the I'll legislature wait. must look to the future, not the past, and consider a more conservative approach. If you go on a spending binge and you have a cooling of the economy, then you're not able to fund what you promised the people. While the Texas economic picture is certainly much different today than when I addressed you here two years ago, that does not mean there are no clouds on the horizon. That extra money leads us to question what will happen after the massive cuts to the budget last year. Going in depth during the 2011 session, there were calls to use money from the rainy day fund to lessen education cuts. Nothing came of that. This year, many of those Republican leaders are calling for rainy day money to battle the state's water problems. Lieutenant Governor David Dewhurst proposed a billion dollar investment for a water infrastructure development bank. And this week, lawmakers in the House submitted a bill to spend two billion dollars from the rainy day fund to help finance the state water plan. Straight ahead, no emergency items yet from the governor's office. 
the speed of which uh, they happen uh, is going to be a snail's pace uh, until the House uh, is uh, fully uh, structured to hear bills. Once the housekeeping's out of the way, Rick Perry has priorities for lawmakers that might include a tax cut for some Texans. My one-on-one -on -one interview with the governor when In Session In Depth returns.